Hey guys, this is part two. I can call this the ugly part. Um, so, in researching this to, to try and get a little bit more information so that it, I could sound intelligent and, and, and understanding and all over this crap, uh, I did a fair bit of research and there were a couple of things that I stumbled across that didn't gel so well uh, in terms of what they are marketing what they are saying in interviews and what they're actually doing uh, so first of all um, on the back of this bottle it says here unique code now this bottle uh, or, or this this product is November this year it has only been out for a, over a month there is a unique code go to this site enter it for some information uh, now you can go there all day long and you there's nowhere to enter it now I don't know whether or not that's something coming if that's something that they have in place for another market I'll touch on that stuff in a moment but to me that's a little bit disappointing um, I could understand if this was something that had been out for, for some time and that feature had been retracted from the website because there wasn't an interest and of course the bottles still have the label quite the opposite it's it's almost like they had some grandiose plan for it and shit happened and it hasn't happened um, yeah that's the first thing now the second second thing is if you go to their Australian Facebook page, they, they're making some very nice um, nice comments about this. Some of the comments are not undeserved. It stands on its own two feet, in my opinion, as, as a very uh, a very palatable whiskey. Uh, where it, they intended it to be in the market seems to work quite well. But when you're making claims such as the most accessible Australian whiskey and and I, I'm serious that was I was writing and doing all this research last night and, and writing notes and their Facebook page uh, opened it up um, ironically it was just after I found out that only 6,000 bottles of this were produced um, they had uh, sold out of their allocation locally and the bulk of it was going to the US and not expected to be released for some time, uh, from my understanding. Um, kind of doesn't gel with the statement of most accessible in terms of, of local uh, made product. Um, in fact, almost the opposite. Now, I don't have anything against um, Australian businesses marketing stuff overseas. We make good damn good products um, I do have issue with statements like that that aren't actually backed up by the company with action um, new product there was always going to be a market on it they would always anticipated that and, and looking at the interviews and stuff like that David Vitali who's the founder um, some of the interviews he's throwing numbers like you know we, we expect to have a run of about 6,000 bottles and we're fairly sure that that we will sell at least 4,000 of those bottles locally by Christmas um, why is the bulk of it going to another country then um, now if we were getting uh, or not we if it was being sold at a higher price overseas and, and attracting a premium hey yeah all day long go to where the money is um, judging off their other expressions that they've offered uh, I did some maths I did some research um, I shouldn't be able to buy from a US retailer and theoretically if you could ship it here but pay the shipping and land it in Australia cheaper than I can buy that same product from the manufacturer direct just my opinion and I'm not talking a little bit of, uh, of money either after conversion rates and everything like that and not favorable conversion rates like you know I'm an ex-banker I can do the maths relatively well um, 
I can find there other expressions that are available in the US for 20 to 30 Australian dollars cheaper in the US than I can locally direct from them. Um, it's not something I agree with. Um, that's just a personal note. I, I'm sure that many people would feel the same. I'm sure that uh, if you had a, a, a good product that had a market um, and you lived in New York and that product you could buy cheaper in England by you know, 20, 30 percent cheaper after conversion so that you're talking the same dollars as in effect you wouldn't be happy with it um, now that's just one one of the the things the marketing um, and the interviews and everything that I read about this particular whiskey kind of seems to be playing at the different levels of whiskey aficionado um, I know in one of uh, Aquavite Roy's streams he mentions uh, some products are not meant for us the 1% uh, they're, they're meant for, for mainstream I don't have a problem with that uh, not at all now I, I didn't go into detail on it in my first video but the wheat and malted barley says it right there on the bottle if you look at it you know uh, their, their stuff on the website their website is very very um, slim in terms of details you can get more details from their Facebook page um, and I'll get into some of that stuff uh, a little bit later as well but the things that they pride themselves or, or, or sort of pitch out there it's a marriage between two iconic Australian um, grains and that's not incorrect at all we're actually uh, one of the major wheat exporters in the world it's us or Russia um, malted barley shit we like a drink so barley is up there with stuff we grow um, and we grow a butt ton of it um, that's fine However, at no point do they actually say that it is a sourced wheat whiskey. Um, now, it's not blended after it's aged or anything like that. They're not aged separately. Um, the, the two distillates are bought together and then barreled. And then they're aged in the barrel from there. But <clears throat> this is where a little bit of the, the what's going on here and where is the truth where is the marketing line really starts to blur and and myself as a consumer and someone who had a really good interest in it, it left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth purely because it starts to border on blatant dishonesty now I had a little bit of difficulty finding originally finding what ratio is what so I'll, I'll address those things as, as I go. So, a couple of interviews um, from David. Uh, now, David is the founder. Um, give ratios as low as 35% wheat whiskey um, or wheat distillate um, and, and up to 60-40. 60-40 seems to be the consensus. That seems to be the figure that they settled on um, before... Uh, before release in terms of what they were going for um, in, in what the information that they're giving out is it 60 40 I can only go by what I can find because um, there is no hard and fast number but uh, the interviews that that David has given with whiskey experts as opposed to whiskey magazines seems to settle on that 60 40 um, now, where this starts to get a little bit murky is the wheat aspect of this. It is sourced. Don't have a problem with sourcing whiskey. It is sourced from a third-party um, distiller. Now, I think it is. I'll just read my notes here. Uh, Manila. Um, I really should have made my notes a little bit better and clearer. Um <laughs> But, yes, yeah, so it is a third-party uh, distiller. Um, don't have a problem with that. 
at all. Where I have a problem with it is the distiller that they're sourcing it from is one of the largest distillers in Australia. They are known for their neutral grain spirit. Keyword there being neutral, clear. That's what goes into a lot of the local vodkas, goes into um, a butt ton of the gins that we sell overseas um, a little bit locally. Um, it does really, really well. They make a fantastic clear neutral spirit. David's claim is that they went to the distiller and they said, hey, yeah, but we want some of that wheat flavor. We want some of those impurities. And the distiller said, oh, no, but those impurities mean it's bad. And, and Dave is like, yeah, no, but those are the flavors we're chasing. I don't know how much of that is pandering to what our expectations are because I think rightfully if if it is a clear neutral spirit going in here and it is a 60% clear neutral spirit and only 40% malted barley changes your perception um, predominantly because a, a neutral grain spirit is redunculously cheap in comparison to a malted barley uh, that you're making yourself um, like a lot cheaper and if you're pitching a product that 60% of your base cost is is half or less than half of that that your competitors are having to to do because corn corn barley uh, all of that is a lot cheap uh, a lot more expensive I should say um, malted barley being sizably more expensive than a wheat based spirit um, it's putting yourself in a, in a very uh, very good position but then to position it above other spirits in terms of price because hey we've done this and then marketing and and, and keeping a lot of that information a bit low and then when pushed on it sort of going oh no but you know we spoke to the distiller and and we said we wanted those impurities and they were on board with the project i don't know how much of that i'm willing to swallow based on some of the other information that I discovered. Um, the other big claim is elementally matured. Now, elementally means out in the elements. Now, the name on the bottle there, Star Ward. Star Ward is kind of supposed to be a play on words, um, as in what comes out of the barrel is starwood. It goes towards the stars. That doesn't happen in a warehouse last time I checked. And all of their barrels are sitting in a warehouse. Now, whether or not that warehouse is climate controlled is neither here nor there as far as I'm concerned. Because last time I checked, most distillers don't climate control their warehouses in terms of they, they, they do their best architecturally to control the climate, um, but they don't have any active measures. They don't have air conditioners cranking um, or anything like that, um, especially not the older ones. Um, so, so to sort of go in there uh, looking around, because I was going to try and find a, a lovely bit of an image of, hey guys, look at this, it's stored here. I can understand not wanting the barrels out in the sun because um, the Australian sun is absolutely vicious, uh, especially in summer. And I don't mean in terms of heat, I mean in terms of, of UV radiation. Um, anything plastic that, that you get um, in the Northern Hemisphere that says UV stabilized for 15 odd years, three years tops down here and it is brittle and, and breaks. Um, yeah, so that was a little bit disappointing to find, find out. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but I don't think it's, it's very honest to sit there and go, your unique selling, um, proposition here, your, your USP is we're elementally matured. Um, yeah, so that sort of hey guys what's the go um, wouldn't even care if it was literally just a, a, a tin roof on it and everything was opened up to the elements 
uh, because that would be less of, of a lie. Uh, and strictly speaking, um, they may fall foul of Australia's labelling laws um, if they were ever to be investigated. Uh, so yeah, I hope that's something that they, they rectify um, because their products are damn good. I can forgive... Um, it's not even about forgiveness. Their business practices are fine. I have zero issue with sending product overseas. I have zero issue with keeping your barrels uh, in a warehouse. I have zero issue with you using a sourced um, distilled spirit to go into your drinks. Uh, I have zero issue with that. Where I have the issue is when it's portrayed to be something else. Um, this is worse than than colouring uh, a three-year-old scotch um, or, or a five-year-old scotch to make it appear as dark as a 25-year-old. Um, it's far more sinister than that, in my opinion. It's, it's misrepresenting the product that you're presenting to your customer. And there's zero need for it with this um, I, I don't have a bottle of uh, Solara I've had a bottle of Solara in the past um, top notch uh, if you can get it do so uh, I think it's New World Whiskies are the distributor in most parts of the world uh, it generally goes under the name of Starwood uh, wine cask they call it something different I believe it's to do with um, the, the names are trademarked in other countries um, yeah but again a name with Starwood Solara, Nova are their, their other expressions they're really heavily hammering home that whole elemental uh, elementally aged when the truth is they're aged no differently really from any other whiskey um, yeah now I touched on it in the first video and if it is something that they have intentionally done kudos if it is something that is a, a happy accident because of the whiskey kudos but this core dead set when I first opened it I got past the foil that wanted to slice my finger to the bone um, when I when I got around the thing because the cork is, is or, or the synthetic cork was is black and the way that the foil was folded on top at first I thought ah it's a screw top and then I thought that's an interesting turn to make uh, for those who are drinking uh, who have uh, drunk monkey shoulder long enough um, monkey shoulder used to actually be a screw top uh, that's going right back um, and they've had about four different cork designs since then um, but I thought it was a screw top and I thought you know what kind of credit to them because if it is indeed aimed at where they're wanting to do which is hey this is a, a cocktail-y thing it's a, a one that you're wanting to to keep around do for mixes and stuff like that a screw top makes perfect sense something that you can put on there it's never going to fail you um, because screw tops don't fail you uh, and it seals the product great it wasn't but synthetic cork good yeah so I don't know how do you guys uh, uh, feel about it I like I said I, I looked at this and and as a, as a whiskey it stands on its own two feet where it's aimed at the market maybe a touch high price wise um, and I think that that may be further exacerbated by some of the research that I did um, taining my feelings about it um, because if it is a 60% source, sourced uh, neutral grain um, flavour or not it's a lot cheaper um, yeah the one thing I didn't say in my, my other video I may have touched on it is although it's 40% ABV, the alcohol burn on the tongue is more intense than what 
the the flavor palette and the nose would indicate uh i kind of that that kind of confirms palette wise my suspicions that it is a neutral grain um i've had the privilege of having pure wheat whiskies before it was a five-year-old um it was gorgeous uh it's not something that i've i've had an issue with that was a much higher abv as well so yeah is it a case of the neutral grain has has watered watered it down um yeah I'd, I'd love to hear some people who are more knowledgeable about the distilling side of stuff um would using a 60 percent neutral grain spirit give your your core malted barley based spirit the legs to survive three years in a, in a very dynamic environment um because that that has been an issue with starwood in one of their expressions it didn't make it to three years it didn't age long enough in a barrel to qualify as a whiskey um i believe it was sold in some markets as a whiskey and then it was a bit of a naughty naughty don't do that um so they called it a a spirit uh yeah or they called it a whiskey based spirit or something ah um so would that give it the legs to to do that would it would it extend the time that they could leave it in uh, in the barrel without it sort of being overpowered wood note wise or would it have the inverse effect or would it make it more woody um, I know lowering the ABV would do that uh, and for all I know they barrel the damn thing at 40% um, yeah alright hopefully that wasn't too ratty hopefully there was some information in there um, that hey guys you know it was useful uh let me know all right have a fantastic one and cheers